Now, what would you do if the home that you had been spending all this time paying for, working for, praying for, all that great stuff, that you woke up one day and you realized that you were no longer able to live there? Wait a minute. I don't want you commenting below saying exactly what you would did because that would be, I don't know, evidence if you go the route like this lady chose to go well in her case she can't be prosecuted but my point is is that uh americans are facing some really tough times here and despite of what the news says despite of the gdp numbers despite of the unemployment numbers we really do have some major systemic problems here with the united states economy not everybody's not going to be feeling it of course you know there's people who are still in very good condition or financial condition at least and they're still able to drive their mercedes benz or their tesla or whatever they like to drive and they're still able to go spend a couple hundred dollars going out to eat still able to take vacations but there are quite a few people here in the united states that are facing some really tough times and we have a couple of indicators that people are facing some really tough times number one there are like a hundred million people not in the workforce. Now, I know that you probably watch the news and you're like, Mark, the unemployment numbers are at an all time low. I heard Joe Biden say that the unemployment numbers are at an all time low or near an all time low. Listen, that's all cap. All right. They're not counting everybody. And even the U6 unemployment rate still doesn't count everybody because if you stop looking for a job for over a year, you don't count. And there are a lot of Americans who have just given up because the cost of living is too high for some. And some people just don't feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel. So there you have it. A hundred million Americans not in the workforce. But that's just not it. That's not it. Right. Car repossessions. Those are actually up significantly. Right. And I know a lot of people are wiring down the street thinking like, hey, how do those people be able to afford those cars? Well, you don't know if they're actually paying for them and uh, they might be hiding that car <laughs> from the uh, repo tow truck coming through. But seriously, like so many car repossessions have been taking place. I mean, even people been giving back car keys. Like people been like, man, just come take the car back. I can't make the payments and the car isn't even worth what I thought it was going to be worth. So just come get it back, man. Just here. Come take it. Another point. Or data point that we have to show that Americans are in really tough times right now is that this savings rate is at a multi-decade low or at least a decade low. I can't remember the exact stat, but here's the thing. All of the money that people had saved up from, you know, the pandemic um, STEMI checks and the hazard pay that people were getting and the extra unemployment, all of that's gone. Like, I don't know if you still have savings from COVID then good for you. But just understand, like most people in America, they don't have those savings anymore. And of course, there's inflation, which has been like eating at everybody's money. So where does that leave us in terms of the housing market? Well, it leaves us in a very tough spot to where people are facing foreclosure, which we knew was the case before then. I mean, that's why they had to pass the moratorium for people to not have to pay. But now that that is all gone, and we have to lift the rug back up to see everything that was swept back under. Foreclosures are taking place. Now, I don't want you to do what this person did in terms of like responding to the foreclosure. Because I mean, foreclosures are devastating enough. Believe it or not, my family went through a foreclosure when I was what? Like 14 or something like that. I mean, my dad came home and he was like, you know what? We got to move. And I'm like, huh? I'm like playing my Nintendo. I'm like, what do you mean we have to move? Like I'm at home just chilling. And we had to move. And believe it or not, that was like a really tough time in my life because I went from like a nice neighborhood. You know, we had what, like a five bedroom home on the basement with a swimming pool in the neighborhood to like apartments. We went to the hood. Like I went from living in one area to like the hood of Atlanta. And I picked up a new set of friends. We were doing some things that uh, I'm really not proud of today down at the Texaco. I guess that's where I learned like a lot of my sales skills, you know, but like even even back then, like there were like four of us out of the four of us that really hung out that were really tight. Uh, one of them was unalived, unfortunately, 
RIP. Um, and the other two, because I'm one of them, the other two have served like prison time. So I was so blessed and covered by the blood of Jesus and the grace of God to be able to make it to where I am today. And uh, yeah, I just bring that up to say foreclosures aren't fun for anybody, but you got to handle them right. But before we get into the video today to talk about, <laughs> and I'm not laughing, but before we get into the video today to talk about what happened, drop the track. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. It's Mark Jenkins, the market genius. Thank you for tuning in. This is a new series that we're going to be doing on this channel right here. So if you like real estate information, if you like investment information, of course, go check out the free course. It is going to be on this channel. The entire course teaching how to trade stocks, options, crypto, even you can use what we're teaching you to trade Forex. Go ahead. It's going to be on our channel until I'm going to leave it up there until March. All right. But if you enjoy information about the real estate market here in Georgia or nationally, definitely tune in, like, subscribe. And of course, this new series is called Foreclosure Stories. Where we're going to be talking about very interesting stories from across the nation with people facing foreclosures, bringing light to what's going on. So hopefully you make the right decision if that's something that you and your family are going through. But I hope that you never, ever, ever have to experience it. And I'm speaking from experience. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the story that we have today. Here we go. We got a family of four. They are facing foreclosure. And actually, they are at the point to where their home has been foreclosed on. They got to go. Got 60 days to move. And you're going to be surprised at what the outcome is. Or maybe you're not. But hey, let's just jump into the article, see what happened, and then we'll be right back. So here we go. We got the article from the New York Post. Suburban New Jersey mom fatally does something to her husband and two young daughters. And then she unalives herself as the family is about to be evicted. Let's jump into the article, man. This is just... Really sad that, that this happened. Look at this. Nice family, all right? A 42-year-old New Jersey mom fatally her husband and their two daughters and then herself in an unaliving this past week just as their suburban home was being foreclosed on. Andrea Alarcon got rid of her husband, Ruben, as well as their daughter, Scarlett, age nine and Emma, age six, before turning that thing on herself inside the family's Lincrest Terrace home in Union, New Jersey. And to keep it real, like right now, if you live with somebody and it's their responsibility to pay the mortgage, you better go ask them, hey, is the mortgage being paid? Now, I know, or, or verify it, do something. Now, I know it sounds like completely off the wall, right? And if you are even a child watching this, you might want to go ask mommy and daddy, like, hey, is everything straight with the roof over our head? It may sound silly, but here you see it is a situation right here where this lady, she went off the rails and took everybody with her. I don't know whose job or responsibility it was to pay the mortgage, but clearly she had a different set of plans. Everybody else might have been packing and she she was really packing, if you get what I'm saying. Now, it says local sheriffs showed up at the home to serve an eviction notice what? around 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. Wednesday when they found all four victims unalived. All right. The unaliving weapon was located near the woman's body, leading investigators to conclude that she was responsible for the domestic violence, according to prosecutors. Now, the home was sold for three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars at a November sheriff's sale. The news station reported, adding that the family who had lived there for 15 years had 60 days to leave or get the boot. Sounds like they got the boot already, but uh, I guess they give them a chance to get the boot on their own. I mean, look at this family. You would never know from just looking at the family that this lady, allegedly, even though there's no witnesses to say what happened, that this lady allegedly will go and do this. Now, in tragedies of this magnitude, there are no words that can heal 
nor explanations that can serve to make sense of them to the public, says Union County Prosecutor William Daniel. Our thoughts go out to the family and friends of these victims and to the Union community as a whole in the wake of this horrible event. Totally agree. Here's the house right here. So the Alarcon family's home, which was in foreclosure, was sold at a November share of sale. Man, sell the cars, man. I don't know how far they were back on their bills, but man, I think that's a Corvette. I know over there, they got a Corvette and a Camaro. You know, they could sell something and look, it don't look like the Corvette is moving. Looks like a, uh, I don't know, mid 90s Corvette. Could have got a couple of dollars for that. Could have got a couple of dollars for that. Now, someone else's house. Man, and there you have it. Man, what a tragic, tragic story. And, uh, Man, you never know who you're living with. Like, you never know how when that pressure gets applied, how somebody is going to react, especially financial pressure. Financial pressure is one of the, the biggest reasons why people like flip their switch. So rest in peace to everyone involved, except for the person that did it. Whoever did it, may you burn in the fiery lake of fire or whatever they call it. Just, just be where you're going to be forever. And I hope you pay for what you did in the afterlife and to those little girls man it's just so unfortunate that the person who brought you into this world decided to take you out over just having to move to another place so it doesn't bring me joy to make videos like this but my job is to get the news out to the people maybe i can help somebody else who is facing that if you are facing foreclosure sell the house sell some items do whatever you got to do and if it gets to the point of where it was with this family and you just have to move, please don't hurt anybody. But this is the Market Genius. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.